Hello, Paul Beckwith. Once again, my cat uh, Shackleton seems to be stealing the show, but I'm pretty used to that now, so so that's fine. So I want to uh, kind of finish off and summarize um, the last uh, sort of two videos. Um, I've been talking about global sea level rise and, um, you know, the basically I want to show you the graphs of the sea level rise and the velocity of sea level rise and the acceleration of sea level rise since the since 1900 you know look at what is done and talk about you know what's going to happen when we have a blue ocean event which isolates greenland you know and given the melt rates of greenland that we've seen this summer you know um, just in the last week or so end of july early august you know greenland is very exposed to and and the melt rate can be enormous from greenland and we can get large rises in global sea level rise as a result of 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 just you know when the you know the arctic is warming so fast and greenland's sitting up there so it's not rocket science to see you know what's going to happen so i was talking about um these particular graphs here um in the last video I can find my pointer seems to have disappeared. So just to remind you, um, this is the paper and you can just go and Google the title and you can dig up the paper, Persistent Acceleration and Global Sea Level Rise Since the 1960s. Okay, this paper that just came out and basically, you know, it shows you the sea level rise in millimeters from 1900 to present day in all of the different basins of the ocean, both with tide gauges and in the satellite era with laser altimeters. Okay, but this is the key result here. So this is global mean sea level anomaly in millimeters. Okay, and this is the, the data. This is the tide gauge data, and this is the error and this is the satellite altimetry data. And what you can see is from about, this is 1960, from about here, you can see that this curve is actually sloping upwards. So if you take the slope of this curve over, over for each of these years, then you get this sort of curve. So basically a constant slope here. So the velocity is about zero. This is the, the rate of rise in millimeters per year. Then you can see the curve is bending upwards, curving upwards here. So there's a rise in, in the rate of sea level rise. It kind of peaks here, and then it starts to fold over here and decrease down here. Okay, but then it starts to rise significantly once again, you know, at this point here. Okay, the rise. So from here upward, the, the, the slope is just curving upward. So the rate of rise is increasing. And if you take the acceleration of the sea level rise, which is a slope of this curve, the derivative of this curve, it gives you the acceleration in millimeters per year squared. And what you can see is, you know, the, so the acceleration was peak here, you know, at about this point here. And then it started to, to drop down to here, reached a minimum. Okay, and then the acceleration, you know, where the curve starts to slope upward, the acceleration rapidly increased until it reached where it is now, roughly 0 0.07 to 0 0.08 um, millimeters per year squared. So that's what's going on from the data. Um, and this is, uh, you know, different, some different regions, the acceleration, some of the different regions. And the acceleration is much faster down in, in, the, in, in parts of the southern oceans. Okay, this is a couple of island gauges, and you can see, you know, rapid rise in acceleration here. Okay, so that, that's basically the gist of this paper, and this is tying it to the role of the wind forcing. I'm not going to go into the details here. I'm just going to show you this plot here. And so the westerly winds, as the westerly winds increase, right, the Coriolis force is to the left in the southern hemisphere, so it pushes the water um, up this way, right, the deflection is to the left and the Ekman flow of the flow of the water is up this way. So it pushes water from this region to this region. So this region experiences the largest sea level rise globally. 
in terms of you know regional analysis and this is the this is actually a sea level drop in this region here but the net effect of these two things is a global sea level rise so the global sea level rise is about this level here 0 0.07 0 0.08 you know the the acceleration of sea level rise here is about three times higher reaching about you know three times 0 0.08 0 0.24 or so and the uh, sea level rise is the lowest over at this region here okay and again this is from you can just google the title here and you can get you know have a look at this uh you know article just from from august 6. so there was an article one of the links from that article is talking about some previous data from february of 2018 uh, research team detects an acceleration in the 25-year satellite sea level record. Uh, basically, you know, they were finding that the rate of sea level rise was increasing by about 0.08 millimeters per year every year, which could mean an annual rate of sea level rise of 10 millimeters per year or more even by 2100. And they talked about the acceleration driven by melting mostly in Greenland and Antarctica. Um, and uh, and so on okay so as far as these numbers you know when they talk about 60 centimeters and 80 centimeters and so on by 2100 uh, you know I think that's an extremely conservative estimate um, so let's have a look at um, this is the uh, you know this particular paper um, that I was talking about. So you can Google this, you know, if you, so Google climate change driven accelerated sea level rise detected in the altimeter error. If you want to find that paper from a couple of years ago, you can click on the PDF right here and this is open. So this is the PDF and again they talk about the acceleration um, of global sea level rise and I always look at, you know, look at the figures and so on. So you can see um, the data, but I'm not going to go into that. What I'm going to basically do is, okay, so, you know, Greenland ice wasn't supposed to melt like last week until 2070. You know, we're not even in 2020. So this is like 50 years ahead of time. The permafrost melt wasn't expected until 2100 or 2090, and we're seeing it now 70 years ahead of time. You know, global sea level rise accelerated 30 years ago, so, you know, versus the acceleration, uh, you know, people have been talking about since 1990, but it really goes back 30 years before that. So climate change is happening faster than expected. Doesn't matter what you, what you uh, look at. Okay. Um, and basically, you know, on August 1st, we lost 12.5 billion tons, that's billion tons of ice on, you know, just uh, last week, Thursday alone, one day. You know, for the entire month of July, we lost about 217 billion tons of water. So th those are huge amounts. We have, we're having a rapid acceleration of melt from Greenland, which is totally expected because the temperatures there are crazy. So on Twitter, I follow Jason Box, and this is some diagrams from, you know, one of his recent tweets. This is showing the surface mass balance of Greenland in terms of gigatons per day. So what you can see is, you know, it starts off in September, you know, we're going into the um, northern winter and the ice, you know, there's snow over Greenland, so the surface is gaining mass and some, you know, so here's the surface mass balance. There's some days when there's lots of gain, other days, you know, there's a lot of variable variability there. And then we come into the summer and the ice, the, 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 the we start losing uh, surface ice. Okay, so the balance goes negative and here we set, you know, record negative level of it's about, uh, you know, it looks like it's about just under 12 here, but one day, you know, 12 and a half uh, gigatons in one day is what was reported lost. And if you take the cumulative effect of all of these things, then this is what you have here. This is this 2018, 2019. So September 2018 and through to, through to this year, present time, and you can see the surface mass, Greenland's gaining mass here, and then it's dipping down here with the summer. This is what's happening this year. This is what happened in 2011 to 2012 when we had record minimum 
sea ice. So we're trending, you know, we didn't, we went higher there and we had a very, very sharp drop in 2011, 2012. Here we haven't gone as high and we're having a very a steep drop, not quite as steep as the, as the 2011, 2012 drop. Okay, and uh, you know, if you use Twitter, so that's this tweet here. And uh, there's lots of data um, on lots of images and lots of stuff on the loss of ice from Greenland. So what have I said in the past? Okay, so basically, this is my YouTube channel. I'm just searching for sea level rise here. And I've done quite a few videos on sea level rise. So this video, can global sea level rise seven meters by 2070? I argued, yes, it can. This was, uh, I did this video five years ago. And then uh, about a year later, I revisited the question and basically came to the conclusions that yes, yes, it can. I mean, if you take, you know, this was based on doubling rates of sea ice law of, not sea ice, doubling rates of ice loss, ice mass loss from Greenland and Antarctica. Basically, the rate of melt was doubling roughly every seven to 10 years. So if you take that as a doubling period and that, you know, that ice, uh, that mass loss from those from Greenland and Antarctica goes to rise, uh, rise, raising sea level. Um, then if you just do a back of the envelope calculation, then those are the type of numbers that you get, you know, by 2070. So, you know, if mechanisms continue the, the rate of increase of melt from Greenland and Antarctica, then you can see the very possibly have these type of numbers, which seem absurd, right? But they're, that's just what the calculation tells you. So I did a series, global sea level is rising faster and faster, you know, a couple of years ago. You know, this was a four part video. So I, you know, I, I suggest this is the second of four parts here. I showed the data, it looks like mass loss from Greenland, from Antarctica. You know, you can look at the, this is the fourth part, third part here, right? So I, I looked at, you know, Hansen's papers. I looked at all kinds of different papers and, you know, basically did all of these videos. Um, and, you know, it, it's, um, yeah, so this, I guess, is the latest uh, edition, this three-part series on, on uh, you know, what, what's happening. Um, and, you know, if we look at that heat, um, if we look at Earth Null School and we look at the air at the surface and the temperature, then um, you can see, you know, I went back to, this is the end of July, and you can see the green areas here are basically above zero temperature. So two point, this is the surface temperature in the Arctic on those partic on, on uh, July 30th, you know, local time. And you can see, you know, the green is just going right up into the Arctic. And this is melting the, the sea ice. It's melting the ice on Greenland. You know, when we have no sea ice in the Arctic in a, on a you know, September, I've done lots of videos on the heating effects and so on. I mean, the Arctic, the ice in, on the ocean in the Arctic keeps the Arctic cool, right? When the ice is no longer there, the temperature won't be pegged to zero Celsius or, or, the, free, or the melting point of the ice. It will be much, much higher. It'll, the, the ocean will just warm on the surface, you know, in the summer months. And Greenland's just sitting here. You know, how will the ice survive on Greenland? The melt rates are going to greatly accelerate. So I really do stick by my number of seven meters of sea level rise by 2070, you know. And, uh, you know, Hansen's talked about maybe five meters by 2100. You know, nobody's gone out on a limb like I have. And I really hope that I'm proven wrong, that it's completely out to lunch, that type of number. But, um, you know, my number doesn't change. That's what I said five years ago. That's what I stick by now. And, uh, you know, I'll continue to show you videos of trends over time as to what's happening. But, you know, this is going to basically, basically remap the, um, the surface of our, of our planet, you know,